Hey guys, this is Chris Anzai again with PhotoG.com here with another gear review. Today I have a special guest with us, Alex Koloskov. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm the guy who uh, created PhotoG. And uh, yeah, today uh, some interesting strobes uh, we got from b and from our sponsor, a set of three strobes, entry-level strobes, uh, monolights, which I consider, um, well, it's a good way to start uh, photography, studio photography with just monolights because they cost not much and they have lots of features. So Chris is gonna tell us about them. Definitely. So just for comparison's sake, we have our Alien Bees B800 strobe light, our workhorse light that we like. And then uh, next we have an Interfit EXD200. Uh, this is a 200 watt second light. Uh, next is a Westcott strobe light. Um, this is an effective 300 watt seconds, and we'll talk more about that. Effective. And then finally, we have the Impact VSD 300, which is a 300 watt second monolight. Now, the prices for each of these varies. Um, the Alien Bees is going to run around $279.95, the Interfit's going to run $169.99, the Westcott is $149.90 and the impact is 238.95. So we're gonna talk about the external features first. Um, we'll start with Alien B, we'll do a quick uh, run through of it because many of you are familiar with this unit. Um, it has a switch for the variable outputs and uh, it has a sync port and a remote port on it as well as a modeling lamp. Uh, this so next kind of standard uh, set yeah. of features, right? It's very standard, very basic. Uh, next is what we call a digital monolight, the Interfit EXD200. And Why digital? Well, because <laughs> it has a digital uh, output um, indicator, this yeah. indicator, and, and it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, definitely. Let me. It glows, so you can see uh, from distance. Definitely you know, show you that. Yeah, it it does, and you can change the settings just with the push of a button. Um, as you can see, it uh, auto discharges when you change uh, different outputs, which is pretty cool too. Um, so this unit also has uh, different buttons for uh, the output as well as a sound indicator, which is pretty cool. The Alien B does not have a sound indicator on it, so you can know when your flash is recycling or when it's ready to shoot uh, after it, sh it fires. Um, it also has uh, a slave, but it also has a three button slave. Three slave mode? Yes, three slave so modes. What is for? So basically, the modes are for using um, the light with different situations. So, say for instance, you have the standard slave mode, which is just your standard um, when another flash fires, this is going to fire. But it also has another mode for a speed light for pre-flashes. So if you want to use TTL mm -hmm. mode on a speed light, uh, this will fire along with a speed light um, and it will fire before the camera uh, shutter uh, all, goes all the way up and down. So it may be an interesting feature, uh, especially if you, like uh, most of photographers, they start from their first strobe, which is speed light, right? Definitely. And then you can add this to the whole set and work with speed light. Uh, on exactly. ETTL mode, which is not really what we do in studio, right? We don't use ETTL right. mode. Uh, we Full use manual. manual mode, even for speed lights, but it's good to have. Why not? Definitely. Definitely a feature to, that's really nice. Um, next, we have the strobe light. Um, this does not have a digital uh, output uh, indicator. Um, it's, just a, it's just this dial right here where you can go from one-fourth flash power to full flash power. Uh, has a test button so you can discharge any remaining energy. Um, has a modeling light where it's variable depending on the flash output, but Are also. You sure? uh, yes, yes, if you want to go ahead and. Let's try. Because uh, modeling light has two settings, right? Yes, yes. So the, the second setting is just full brightness, and then the first setting will I change. Don't see. I don't see. I think that's on the second setting, so let's go ahead and okay. change it, and boom. There we go. Okay, so half brightness or just normal modeling light. Okay. Exactly. Good to know. Yes. And it has a cool handle here, so if you need to transport it, it's relatively light. 
Yeah, it's quite so, light. It's lighter than uh, Alien Bees. Alien Bees, yep. So, and it has a ready indicator, and it does beep as well. So, but there's no button for there it. There is no button. There is no discharge when you change uh, power or when you lower the yeah. power. So it has very basic features. Right. And you don't know actually when it's ready. Let's say we have full power. We do a test. It's ready, then let's move it to the medium power. Now it's supposedly have medium power, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's still ready, all the way uh, it's ready. So, well, not bad, but it's good to know that uh, it may be some situations, right? Definitely, definitely. So, finally we have the Impact VSD 300, and this is another digital monolite. Uh, has that digital indicator right here. Um, has nice raise it, raise it so oh oops. We'll see it. Mm -hmm. yep there we go have it has some nice inset buttons on there it also has the three slave modes as the other one um, we're not exactly sure uh, because the documentation doesn't say it but we're pretty sure that this light mm -hmm. has the same features as that light look um, at this yeah they look <laughs> uh, different shape but uh, you know everything is quite colors uh, controls even that yeah. uh, Digital indicator the same. Yep. Uh, brand is different, but something tells us that manufacturer probably is the same. The same and the right. plant and the even this rubberized material on yes. the outside yes. is very similar. So, uh, but there is a key difference between this light and and that light, um, and it, it deals with the mounts, and we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, so it has the test which discharges the light as well as uh, variable modeling light uh, controls and an audio button feature so you can turn it on or turn it off uh, rather than the other one which always stays on. So those are the basic external features. Cool. Um, what about look? Which one do you like the most? I like the impact the most. I Without mean, let's say knowing what's inside and how it works just by looking at it. This one. Yeah, the, definitely that one. Uh, <laughs> this looks so old. I mean, it's like a cube. And it and it has this, I mean, this is very archaic. It's old. Yeah, it's old. You know, I mean, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just doesn't look as nice. <laughs> yeah, but alien bees, it's something alien. For right. me, this more alien, I mean, just by look. Um, definitely. Yeah. Futuristic, true. So next we're going to talk about, real quickly, the mounts. Okay, because... With every monolite, you'll need modifiers. I mean, that's a given. So, with the Palsy Buff Alien Bees, they have a proprietary mount, uh, which uh, White Lightning and Alien Bees both use. Um, and it's this little, uh, I guess, I don't know, you squeeze trigger mount. Yeah, squeeze, some brackets. Yeah. And, and it works fine, but uh, there are uh, issues with this. Sometimes I've seen reports I never have run it in the studio, but when I use it outside with wind, it was an issue when uh, light modifier, let's say light shield box, was uh, falling apart. Yep. And uh, there is, I can tell you that there is maybe always little gap and light spills it. Sometimes, you know, when uh, again it can be really affecting, not really, a little bit affecting in the studio because everything is so precise. Let's say you shoot some jewelry or, uh, well, something which is, requires really precise lighting, very little spill can affect the picture because you can get lights uh, really close to the subject in some macro shots. And this is what I had uh, with um, Alien Beats and White Lighting and even with Einstein Pulse Buff stuff. So it's cool, but I'm not personally not a, a big fan of uh, that mount. All right. So next we have the Interfit EXD200 and if you guys did tell us what kind of mount this is, and <laughs> that would be great. But it uses this, this strange uh, hooking mount with a little rubberized dial on it. And I don't really like it. Okay, first of all, it's very hard to get things on and off. And I'm even having a trouble, trouble with it now, and I've been using it all day today. So you put it on, and you twist uh, this little dial, this rubberized dial to lock it. lock it. But yeah, I don't know what the name for this mount is. If you guys could tell us, that'd be great, but it's very annoying and I wish it would be a lot simpler to use. Uh, next on the Westcott, well on both the Westcott and the Impact, 
these are really nice mounts. They're Bowens mounts, very common, really easy to use, yes. One button and boom, it is on and you click it back in, boom. Yeah, and and Bowens is really a widespread mount. I mean, there are lots of like modifiers for Bowens. Definitely. And the gaps that Alex was talking about on the Alien Bees don't really exist on the Bowen mounts yep. because it's all integrated uh, into the strobe itself. So those are the mounts. Uh, next, we're going to talk about... Uh, Chris, uh, sorry about interruption. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Let me tell you uh, about the mounting and uh, if you in the way of selecting uh, your first uh, monolight. This is really important to look not really at the light, but at the mount and uh, accessory for it or light modifiers, especially for studio photography, because light modifier is the most critical part of the whole shot in studio. Not the camera, not the light. I can stick any light inside the box and get nice shot. Even my just the bulb from you know household lighting. But how many soft boxes? Uh, what's the price for those soft boxes uh, on? Of course, there are some different speed rings and you can uh, exchange them, but it's always good when, uh, let's say, you have a uh, Bowens mount, you can buy uh, a lot of stuff, even some relatively tricky things like, uh, let's say, optical uh, spot. For example, for Bowens, uh, I, first I found that optical spot when I uh, moved to Bron Color and was like, wow, there is such thing. <laughs> and then I found, hey, Bowens has it, and I didn't know. Just because I was using Alien Beast before and it was no such thing. So, selecting the strobe is really uh, like a long, long term investment. Right. Because you're going to invest a lot into light modifiers. And then, if you will try to or decide to go different route with your strobe, imagine what will happen if a new uh, strobe will have different mount. Very expensive. It may be really expensive. So, uh, just don't That's a great point. That is a great point, Alex. And okay. thank you for bringing that up because that is very important in selecting uh, these units is, you know, the cost of the modifiers, the cost of um, and the, the availability of the modifiers because some of these brands don't have that many modifiers on them. So they won't be as useful uh, as some of these other brands. So next we're going to talk about the power output. Um, and just we're just going to talk a little bit about our test. Um, we're not going to actually show you the test. Um, it's, a, it's a little boring because we just shot a wall and basically used a light meter uh, to get these power level readings. But, but we'll have it on the post, right? Yes. Just go, the link is uh, right under this video. Click it and you'll see the actual pictures. Definitely. But tell us the result. So, well, we used the same light modifiers for each of these lights, just so that we could have a fair comparison. Um, we used the impact one. Uh, it seemed to be the brightest too, oddly enough. Um, and it has some type of, uh, I guess, these ridges inside of it that kind of... Yeah, it uh, kind of focus the light. Focuses, really produce yeah. the smallest uh, spot on the wall, this one, just because it's focused. So we use it on each light, even if it's not uh, really fit. We just hold it uh, yeah, with we our hands it. and mm -hmm. we use uh, what? A uh, light meter to measure Yes, we, we use the light meter to measure the output. At um, full power. At full power and we shot at 1 60th of a second uh, ISO 100 on our Canon, uh, was it a 60? 60, yeah. Yes, uh, okay. All right, so here are the results. Uh, I have them written down. So the Interfit shot at F18 um, at full power. It's 200 watt second. Yes. By specification. This is a 200 watt second okay. light. So this is our least powerful of all three. So it shot at f18. Uh, surprisingly, the Westcott, which was the effective 300 watt second, shot at f18 as well. So these two have the same huh. power levels. So does that's why they probably add effective watt second. Right. Because it's not really white, I mean, <laughs> what second, it's something else. You remember that uh, game, uh, what uh, Paul Sebaf was playing uh, some time ago? That 800, AB1, uh, 800, it was 800 effective watt second, but 320 true watt true second. Watt seconds, which yeah. was, for me, uh, back there, uh, seven years ago, whatever, when I was using them, I was like, oh, it's so cool, it's 800 watt second for such money, and then I got it. Wait a minute, what's it true? 
So, guys from uh, West Coast, West Coast, I don't know why you went this way. What effective means? I know there is some explanation, but it doesn't make sense. It's 200 watt second, okay? It's 200 watt second for 140 dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that that is true. And lastly, our impact uh, shot at f25, ISO 100 at 160 watt seconds. So the impact and the Alien B uh, had the same power output, even though the Alien B is 320 watt seconds. Well, plus minus. Yeah, there's Good a plus know. and minus. Yeah. Not sure who's uh, maybe this output a little bit more, or maybe Alien B output a little bit less, but uh, it's uh, fair enough. Yep. Awesome. Uh, let's check. You know, we can uh, show you a recycling time right here. Sure. Right? Yeah. Where is one port oh, for? Here we go. Uh, let's do this little test. When? Uh, because this will beep. This will beep. I'm not sure about this. Will it beep or not? Yeah, it will beep. So, okay. Let's turn on. And you'll just hear uh, everyone except uh, LNB. All right. And full power on all of them. What about specification? Uh, which light supposed to run how many seconds? Okay, on yeah, effect? definitely. So, so Alien Beast has a one second recycle time. At least that's what the manufacturer says. The Interfit has a two second uh, recycle time. The Westcott has a 2.5 second recycle time. And the Impact has a two second recycle time as well. Okay, but this three, two, 200, 300, two, two, and 300 watt second. Right. Cool. So let's run and uh, slave is on. Is it slave on everywhere? Uh, At least on this. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So okay. first this one. Yes. Uh, three second by specification, right? Uh, two two seconds. Two, two seconds. seconds. Yes. Then two point five seconds, which is let hear it again. You know this is first. Yeah. Okay, wow, so weird. two seconds. Huh. Let's think that it's two seconds. <laughs> this is probably three seconds. And uh, this is probably four, four seconds, seconds. Maybe yeah. even five seconds. So something is... Something's going on. Yeah, going one. on there. That is strange because uh, this is supposed to have the, s the longest recycle yes. time out of all three of these. So. No, this one. Three seconds. Well, that one only has two seconds, actually. Oh, two. Yeah. So... Two seconds, two seconds, and two point five seconds. Okay. So, and actually, much the um, island bees is faster. There is super no, fast. Yeah. Uh, buzz, but let's show. There's just a button right here. Boom! It's already ready. Yeah. So, cool. So it's interesting to see how it's different uh, from what uh, manufacturer put in specification. It's probably similar to those hamburgers or whatever when you look at the, the uh, you know on the picture <laughs> yeah. and then you go to the store and the restaurant buy it and yeah. what but uh, I get I think we, we get used to it we all <laughs> definitely <laughs> okay. yeah yeah a lot of this is is just marketing so and really that's why we're doing these tests to show you guys what actually works and what actually doesn't work um, and what features we like and what features we don't like right. so that you guys can make a pretty good informed decision Not just based on what's written down as the spec of the product as you can see. I mean we kind of Debunked some of the specs that were used on these on these lights So testing these lights out really, you know helps you get a real sense of how these actually work Instead of just reading it, you know off a description Right. So, uh, are we done with uh, what we wanted to show with this video? Because the rest is on the article. Uh, just click uh, on the link and uh, get to 40G. And that's where you will read the, uh, the whole thing and uh, see everything. Definitely. Chris, do we have anything left? I think that's it. We covered everything. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these lights, feel free to send me an email at chrisanzai at photog.com. Uh, I do read them all and I do try to respond to them all in a timely manner. So definitely send those over. And I think that's it for today. Chris, tell me, uh, which one you will choose? This one, right? You already told but Yes, I like the Impact for several reasons. It looks cool. <laughs> I mean, and uh, it has the Bones mount. And it's $40 cheaper than my old Alien B, so I might have to reconsider thinking about getting some impact strobes. 
Right, that's the cool thing about Bowen's mount. There are many lights with the same mount. I mean, many, many different monolights, including Bowen's himself, right? So Definitely. if, uh, let's say, Chris will decide to uh, switch from impact to something else, something more expensive and more powerful later on, he will still uh, use the same light modifier, same suit boxes. And suit boxes cost quite, quite, by the way, about suit boxes. I got uh, this strip box. You know, in studio, we use strip box much more than uh, any other suit boxes. Narrow suit box is what uh, I call. So I got it on eBay uh, for that uh, new thing, uh, new uh, course for beginners in studio photography. And uh, it's supposed to run with uh, speed light. There is a mount for speed light. So the whole set, I got it for like $75, which is really cheap. And uh, this is nice suit box with double buff in it. So it looks just fine. And what I found, I didn't even look when I was buying because uh, it was for speed light, so I didn't care. Uh, it's exactly the same mount, it bones mount. So it will fit uh, these two lights and uh, not only this, bones as well. And it's awesome. And it also has this nice uh, bracket for mm, mounting speed lights. Yes. Which is, well, if I would know all of this 10 years ago when I was starting to buy stuff in studio, um, in my home studio, in my little corner in the bedroom, I would probably save some good money because I started from Novatron. Yeah, I bought some really old <laughs> Novatron pack with the lights and just to find out that there is no way to put any light modifiers because it was just, uh, you know, the, uh, the light head mm -hmm. with reflector and no mounts. It was like, what? So I had no idea what I was doing. Well, I hope you guys now have a pretty good idea. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you, Chris. Right. You're very welcome. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more reviews. And if you have, again, if you have any questions or comments, definitely send them over. Thank you guys and have a great day. And thank you, BNDH, uh, BNDH for the video.com. Definitely. We we'll love this store. Okay. Bye.